The Bible is the most important book that you will ever read and is most powerful. So here are 10 tips on how to read the Bible, which is free, but makes over $400 million a year. So number 10, get a Bible that you can read and stay away from dangerous versions of the Bible. So there are seven safe versions of the Bible that you should read and seven unsafe versions of the Bible that you should stay away from. So here's a list on the screen of each Bible that you should get and each Bible you should stay away from. And so the list of safe Bibles that are close to the original translation are the KJV, the NKJV, the NASB, the ESV, the HCSB, the NIV, and the NLT. And the seven dangerous Bible versions that you should stay away from are the Passion Bible, the Message Bible, the Living Bible, the RSV, the NRSV, the NA. B-R-E, and the New World Translation Bible, which is the Jehovah Witness Bible. These are dangerous Bibles. Don't read them. And the Bible that I personally read is the KJV, but I had two friends who were lukewarm, living very sinful lives as professing Christians, who said that what actually made them live a strong, mature, holy Christian life is getting a New King James Study Bible. Number nine, don't start reading the Bible in the Old Testament nor in Genesis. So if you are a new Christian, remember this. The Old Testament is Jesus concealed, but the New Testament is Jesus revealed. So to understand the metaphors, the symbolies, the symbols, and everything that's in the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, the Old Promise, is easier for you to just start in the Gospels. And as you're going through the Gospels, go to the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, and then work your way back. <laughs> and then you'll have a better lens to understand and read the Old Testament. So you will have a good footing to your Christian walk if you remember one and one. Read at least one chapter of the Bible a day in context and pray at least one hour a day. So if you would like a new King James study Bible, I have it in the link below as a resource. If you don't believe me, just listen to the benefits of people who read the Bible at least four times a week. So some bad statistics. Out of all professing Christians, only 13% of Christians say they read the Bible at least one time a month. And that one time a month is considered when they hear the Bible read during a sermon from their pastor or online. That is terrible. That's like saying 13% of basketball players practice basketball one time a month. You wouldn't believe them. But... There was a study that shown that if you read the Bible one time a week throughout the entire year, nothing in your life changes. They continue on in the study two times a week. Nothing in your life changes. Three times a week, there is a blip. But again, mostly your life stays the same. But when you read the Bible four times a week, Loneliness goes down by 30%. Anger drops by 32%. Bitterness drops by 40%. Alcoholism drops by 57%. Feeling spiritually dry drops by 60%. Sexual immorality, porn, masturbation, sex outside of marriage drops by 62%. And then your increased numbers, evangelism jumps by 200%, and then discipleship jumps by 230%. Because the word of God from Hebrews chapter 4 is living, moving, sharper than any two-edged sword, able to separate bone from marrow, tearing asunder the heart of man from his intention. So if you would like a new King James Study Bible. I have it in the link below as a resource. 
The Bible is a spiritual book. John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. And so when you read a spiritual book, you move from being dead to being alive and spiritual and supernatural yourself. Number eight, when you read the Bible, make sure that you pray for wisdom from the Holy Spirit. So this is James chapter one. It says that if we would ask of God for wisdom, he'll give us liberally of it and he will not upbraid or he will not withhold from us. So again, the scriptures, which are written from first Corinthians two, were not given by a man's will. It wasn't written by humans, right? But it was given men under the power and inspiration of the Holy Spirit gave utterance. So the word inspiration actually means God breathed. The Holy Spirit wrote the Bible. So everything that's supposed to be in the Bible is in there. Everything that's not supposed to be in the Bible is not. There are no lost books of the Bible. And so even the scriptures that say, if anyone should add or take away from this gospel, let them be a curse. So that's Galatians chapter two, and book of Revelation chapter one. So you're not supposed to add or take away from the Bible by making up your own interpretations. It's actually very dangerous. Any added books like the Quran, Jehovah Witness, New World Translation, uh, the Book of Mormon, all the cult books are very dangerous. And the Bible actually says that they had a curse on the readers of them. So don't read that stuff. Stay away from it. Right. Number seven. Remember when you read the Bible, that the Bible is not about you. It, it is about God. It's about who is God and what is he like? That is probably the best thing you could do when reading the Bible, because we move from a man-centered gospel, idolatry, focusing all on us and move to the point of who is God, what is his nature, what is he like, uh, what is his plan? You get the wisdom of God by having the mind of Christ that's spoken to us in Philippians chapter two. And so a part of this, and remember that the Bible is not about us, the Bible is not written in our context. So the Bible is first written in Hebrew and Aramaic. It was translated into Greek, and then it was translated to whatever language you're reading and I'm American, so I read English. And so you need to have accompanying books that you can study the Hebrew, the Greek, and you can get verses, a deeper understanding of what was said. And remember that these scriptures were written for a certain people group during a certain time. So remember that not all of the Bible is actually instructional, but there are bits and parts as you have the whole story of Jesus and the whole story of God. So your first five books of the Old Testament are your law books. So that is Genesis through Deuteronomy. And then you have the following books from Joshua to Esther, which are your history books. This is the history of the children of God, the children of Israel, Jews, and Christians. This is a, these are historic books. So you can learn again what God likes, what God dislikes, his nature. But these books, all of the books of the Bible are written for a specific people group in a specific time. Next, you have your poetry books, starting with the book of Joe and then ending with the book of Song of Solomon or Psalms of Songs. Next, you have your major and lesser prophets. So your major prophets or just the books of prophets are Isaiah to Malachi. And again, since these are prophets writing these books, these are very prophetic books and you will see Jesus throughout all the scripture, but especially the books of the prophets. Next, after Malachi, you have your New Testament, your four First four books of the New Testament are your Gospels. This is the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Next, you have the book of Acts, which is your history book, um, church history. 
and basically the foundation of what it looks to have the continuation of the ministry of Jesus. And from Romans to Jude, you have your letters, your epistles. They have several authors, but the majority of the epistles are written by Paul. And lastly, the end of the Bible is the book of Revelation, which is Re Revelation chapter one, is the revelation of Jesus Christ, the gospel. And so the entire story is concluded in the gospel, I mean, in the book of Revelation. And it says that the testimony of Jesus Christ is the gospel. This is what the whole story is about and the entire conclusion of the matter. And you need to know that there is actually a promise and a blessing of reading the book of Revelation for everyone who's afraid to read it because there's a lot of judgment. <laughs> but there is a lot of redemption also. Number six, read the Bible out loud. So this is Romans chapter 10, verse 17. It says, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And so but here's some just fun tips when it comes to learning the Bible that I learned through studying Spanish <laughs> and studying a foreign language that you actually retain more by number one, taking notes. So as you're reading the Bible, take notes, but also you will retain more of the information as you read it. If you actually hear it out loud as well, just like how you do with songs. And so oftentimes we have trouble memorizing the Bible because we just read it internally. But if you read it out loud, um, it's another area that you can retain the Bible. So. Random fun facts, 10% um, of people learn audibly. So those are sermons, songs, they read the Bible out loud. 30% of people learn visually. So this is why it's important to meditate on the word of God. And then 60% of people learn by doing. And this is an importance of you actually getting a physical Bible. So if you read your Bible on your phone, there is an infinite scroll, right? And so everything looks the same on the page, but actually when you get alone and read your Bible without distractions, turning off your cell phone, getting off of social media, you will find that you will begin to memorize the Bible, even by the page that it's on because it's broken up in different sections. And so this is just a part of the full body experience. So it says to worship the Lord, your God in spirit and truth and love the Lord, your God, with all your mind, all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And so all your strength is actually your body. So you have to actually physically pick a time that is consistent in the morning and at night, um, that you have rhythm and you have habits that are actually conducive for studying. So it's the same way that you would study for school, study your scripture with a physical Bible. Number five, do not read the Bible alone. So again, we are in a Western context, most of us, but we are not living in Israel. We're not living where the Bible is actually written, nor during the time period in which the Bible is written. And so, the Lord, knowing this, has actually built out the church with elders and people of leadership to help us understand the Bible. This is Second Peter uh, chapter 1, verse 20 and 21. It says that the Bible wasn't given by private interpretation by any person, but men of God, empowered by the Holy Spirit, gave the scripture as functioned by him. And so the Bible is also useful for reproof, correction, doctrine, and instruction in godliness. So there are four primary uses for the Bible. Again, is doctrine, what do we actually believe? Instruction, how to actually live it out. Reproof, um, how to call out things that are not true. Correction, how to adjust so that the man of God is fully furnished to every good work. So you're actually built up the word edifying, by the word of God, because you actually can know truth from error and a little poison is very dangerous. 
And so this is why the scripture says that a bad company corrupts good morals. That chapter is on people who believe differently than the scriptures. And so how the Bible has set up the church, the church has been given teachers, evangelists, prophets, apostles, and pastors for us to understand the Bible. So if you have some type of revelation or some type of wisdom or understanding of the Bible or interpretation, bring it to people who have been walking with God a long time, people at your local church, people in your Bible study, but even Bible scholars or teachers on YouTube who have been vetted. There are a lot of people on social media who are dangerous and saying a whole bunch of lies. And this is why the Bible actually gives people who have leadership in these five roles, the fivefold ministry, so that the sheep are not devoured, right? And so this is why I'm making this video. So you're equipped. So you know how to fight the good fight of faith. Number four, memorize your Bible. So here's some tactics that I've learned just from studying Spanish and language arts in school when you had vocabulary words. So read a Bible scripture three times out loud and it will get into your short term memory. But if you read a Bible scripture seven times out loud, it will get into your long term memory. And so don't feel obligated that you have to rush through the Bible. Um, but if you do take your time and meditate on the scriptures, it will actually retain if you read the Bible an hour before you go to sleep or the first thing when you wake up in the morning. And so remember to wake up early, get some peace and quiet, uh, get off social media, do not be distracted, but keep your space clean and clear so you can memorize the scripture. And so this is Joshua chapter one, verse eight, meditate on the words of the law day and night that you will make your way prosperous. And fun thing, if you want to know what scripture to pick, I always enjoy allowing the Holy Spirit to give me the scripture to pick because this is John chapters 14, 15, and 16. It said that the Holy Spirit is an advocate, a teacher, and a helper that he'll bring all the words of God to your remembrance. And so anytime I'm reading the Bible and I really like a verse, again, remember the Bible is not about us. So we cannot insert ourselves into the scripture, but if a scripture is resonating with the character of God or his nature, then write that scripture down. And as you're waking up every day, read the scripture from the previous day and see how many you can memorize. And also light will have you memorizing a lot of verses. I mean, one of my favorite verses was second Timothy chapter one, verse seven, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Second Peter three, verse nine. We know that God is not slack as some men count slackness, but long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes that he should not perish, but have everlasting life. Um, Revelation is chapter 3, verse 20. Um, I stand on the door and knock if any man should hear me. And open the door, I shall come in and make his sup with him. Um, make my sup with him. Me and my father will come in and make our sup with him. Hebrews chapter four, the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two as your sword, living, separating us um, to the tearing asunder, uh, bone from marrow, the heart of man from his intention, right? I am literally just rallying off Bible scriptures right now because I was intentional about reading book by book, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. Do not jump around. The Bible is very intentional in, in how the Holy Spirit wrote it. And so by reading it in sequential order, I am able to basically see uh, the scriptures that I read. I can know the approximate area because I know the story that's happening around it. Number three, take communion as you read the Bible. 
So this is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. It says, as often that you gather together in remembrance of me, take this in remembrance of the new covenant. And so the important thing about the new covenant and the blood, remember this is John chapter one, verse one. And again, what's the word? The word was with God. The word was God. This is Jesus Christ. So as I remembering Christ by taking communion, I am also taking it of uh, the life that's in us, right? So Jesus was called the bread of life. And in John chapter six, it says that he do, who does not eat of my flesh and drink of my blood has no life in them, right? So the gospel is that we're moving from death into life. Okay? And so as we move from death into life, the Holy Spirit is in the scriptures. And this is a living book. This is Hebrews chapter four. It's just not like a story or a fiction book that you read in school. These are real people. These are real historical events. And so we have to remember Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection. Number two, don't think about the scriptures. Obey them. So this is a very hot take, but it comes from Charles Spurgeon about people who are hearers of God's word and not doers. So we actually moved away from basically the Jewish faith and the Hebrew faith and kind of moved to more of a Western scholarly view of the scriptures. We are very mindful of the scriptures of like, oh, these notes and this wisdom and so on and so forth. But a lost view of the Bible is that the Bible is a book to be done, not to solely be intellectualized, just thought about. So a lot of people are amused enough that, oh, oh, I got some type of understanding or wisdom from the Holy Spirit, and they'll live off of that and do nothing that the Bible says, right? So this is James chapter 1, verse 22 that this is pure undefiled religion, that we take care of the orphans and widows and visit them in their affliction and be unspotted from the world, right? So that's a commandment. And so a lot of people will read the scriptures and only be hearers of the word and not doers of the word. So that's James chapter four, verses 17. But it says that faith without works is dead. Show me your faith by your work, oh, show me your, show me your faith, but I will show you my faith by my works. So evidence I actually have faith in God because we're saying by grace through faith. So true authentic faith will produce works, right? So the Bible is a book to be understood and obeyed, not strictly thought about saying, mm, that was good. That was good. We listen to a lot of podcasts. We have a lot of tweetable clips going out on social media, but we don't have a lot of laborers of the gospel. It says the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. Pray to the God of the harvest that he will send more laborers. Don't just think about the scriptures. Do what they say. Believe it. The Bible is a book to be believed. And then number one tip when reading the Bible, remember Jesus in the scriptures. So the Holy Spirit told me this and I just love it. Um, the Holy Spirit said daily to remember the cross, to remember his crucifixion, to remember his nails pierced hands. So it says that we behold Jesus, we are transformed in a twinkling of the eye, right? So the Bible, again, the New Testament is Jesus Christ revealed. And the Old Testament is Jesus Christ concealed. And so if I know that in the end we win, <laughs> this is why I read the book of Revelation, then I have a deeper appreciation for the finished work of Jesus on the cross because our God is alive. He is not dead. And so the scripture for my life becomes more moving, more living as I know that Jesus Christ is always with me. And so we could just have a life that is 
under the authority of the word of God. So if all these things happen naturally from Romans chapter four, it says that God, if God has said a thing, he is faithful to perform it. So everything that applies to us, again, some of the promises of the Bible are for a specific people group. It's not for us, but the ones that are for the church collectively, for believers, disciples, followers of Jesus Christ, disciples, they will automatically come because of his finished work on the cross. So I have all the resources that I listed out today about the different Bibles that you should avoid or you should get on the new King James study Bible uh, is a link below. And also, if you think that you're actually called to ministry, I actually have a Logos Bible software that you should check into and it'll help you studying in the Bible. And also make sure that you have a Bible concordance um, or the concordance app that you can download on your app store. And the Blue Letter Bible is also helpful. GotQuestions.org is also very helpful in your Bible study, uh, understanding context. So make sure to get, grab all of those resources in the link below. And so thanks for watching and check out this, these next videos on how to fast and also how to pray.